Welcome. Uh, this is I'm Daniel Posney, and this is Shifting Perspectives. And this is just a real short 10 minute little episode that uh, kind of puts a different perspective on different topics. And today's topic is about attracting your soulmate. And this is something that um, I know, at least in Sedona, it comes up a lot that um, um, the people that live here talk about that, talk about people that they know that have soulmate relationships or that people are wanting that kind of relationship. And then there's people that come to Sedona that are wanting that relationship. Um, there's a lot of talk about what that means and what that's supposed to look like. And I wanted to look up what maybe what the original piece of that, what it was supposed to mean. And a soulmate is supposed to be uh, where someone really gets along with that person and their same beliefs and values and um, the way they kind of look at the world is very similar and it's, uh, it's a very like um, agreeable or conducive relationship, it sounds like. But in the, the kind of the spiritual world, um, it's been made into be a lot more than that. And that's cool because it can be a lot more than that. And I know that for myself, you know, I've, I've been experiencing this soulmate relationship. And I want to share with you um, how above and beyond what like the dictionary might, you know, say about a soulmate relationship. So first, I want to kind of share with you about what the different types of soulmate relationships could be, because when we talk about soulmate relationship, our mind automatically goes to a love relationship. And that's not necessarily true. And, you know, it's... Um, it can be somebody that you just have a friendship with. And I know that I have several guy friends that I love and they love me and we spur each other on and we, you know, we just, uh, we have no judgment about each other. We come from different backgrounds, different races, and, and we just have this real strong connection. And it's just something that doesn't take a lot of effort. And um, we just inspire each other in this way. And it's more than a regular friendship. And I would say that, uh, like, even I'm thinking about Anthony, my friend, it's just one of uh, men friends that I have. And, you know, we don't meet all the time, but when we do, it's just, it's very special. And we come from completely different backgrounds. And uh, he's an African, African American man. I'm a white guy. And he comes from Mississippi. I come from California. And yet I feel so comfortable around him. And uh, he just stirs me. So I have several friends like that. Some are uh, men and some are women, but they're not. The, but that the love uh, or intimate relationship connection isn't there. And it's not supposed to be. And I remember I had this one relationship that was really powerful, like a soulmate, kind of twin flame even kind of thing. But it really wasn't meant to be a love relationship. But my mind wanted to take it to that place. And it, that's that's kind of a very intense, dramatic kind of place to be. So just as a little note that, that there are several different types. One is romantic. The other one is a lifelong soulmate. Some are not lifelong soulmates. So you may have a soulmate where you're having a relationship and everything's great and you're stirring things up and you're growing and you're evolving. And then there's a time frame to that. And we have it in, again in our romantic minds that it's going to be a lifelong thing. And we think that we want a lifelong thing, but um, it may be that it's, uh, it's not in our best interest. So the best thing that I, that I found to do is to keep that, the, the feeling of a lifelong relationship as long as it makes sense and don't press it into something that is not meant to be. I know that's, that's a hard thing to hear that, you know, it's not maybe not supposed to be lifelong. Mine, I, t I intend to be a lifelong relationship. Don't get me wrong. But if things change in your life, you have full permission to, to change it out of that lifelong commitment into something that feels better. So I just want to kind of keep, put that out there. I know that's going to stir some people a little bit. Um, the other one is a teacher soulmate, that someone might be a soulmate in your life as a teacher. And I've got you know one or two of those too, that um, they're really powerful teachers in my life. And it feels like there's this deep, soulful connection with them. Uh, past life soulmates. Those are people that um, you've got some connection beyond this world that you can't quite nail down, but um, you start kind of um, investigating or discovering all these 
inner workings of your connection and it just goes beyond this world like with valerie and i and i um those connections are definitely past life and it's also connections with this life and that when we talk about our life and our history and our childhood our lives have been kind of going back and forth and just missing each other sort of thing so we've kind of done the same things in life and experienced the same things in life like you know rare occurrences of things and here she is so uh it's just a it's a wild thing to think that we have such a connection but there's also something about um that i want to say about uh, my past relationships i couldn't have got to the place that i am without those relationships Yes, this relationship is the like a culmination of all my relationships, but it's all those other relationships that taught me and to, to bring me to where I am now. There was some serious work that needed to be done with me, and it, it was those relationships that um, that were partly for that, that um, there was some experience I needed to have, some teaching that I needed to discover, some pulling out a different version of me that I'd be more compatible to be in a relationship with Valerie because before you know five ten years ago I would have blown I would have blown it up you know it just yeah it's yeah we're soulmates but you haven't got your shit together yet <laughs> so there was some work that I needed to do on that and uh, I look back at my relationships now and I just I'm so blessed and grateful to have every single one that I've had they've all been meeting me where I can be met and maybe it was that last one that I had before Valerie that that did the most work that allowed me to come to a place to completely love myself and to be in relationship with Valerie. Um, the other ones are karmic soulmates that you've got some karmic things, some kind of balancing of energy to work out. Um, friendship soulmates that talked about soul contracts that there's something that needs to be worked out there too. Um, soulmate family that there's some. Um, blood family or soul family that uh that you just really connect with that they're they're more than just friends they're really more like family and you guys kind of gather together in this way that you just love hanging out with each other not just to party not just to do anything but just to be around each other's presence so i want to go over uh quickly since i don't have very much time uh 17 signs that you found your soulmate you feel it on an intuitive level it's not something that really comes from a thought so much as something that sounds good when you say it, but it's just a, it's an intuitive thing that you would say something like, I don't know, I just can't explain it. And I'm not lost in it and the, the attachment with them, but I really feel intuitively in my bones that this is a this is a soul connection. It's that kind of thing. Uh, you feel understood like you don't need to explain too much with this person that they're they're kind of like instantly on that same track um you accept them at their best and at their worst like i don't know if i've ever had this that i've that i've accepted and not judged somebody so much as i do or don't with valerie that with all the, the the different things in that make up Valerie, I accept and love all of them. And yeah, they'll, they'll like little things will trickle up on my mind, will start to go into old patterns of judgment, but then I pat it back down and it just becomes just loving her as she is. And it's wonderful. Um, I gotta get my glasses here. Um, you recognize them. Like that is one of the coolest feelings is that you recognize them and they recognize you or the other way to say it is that you see them like there's um you know when you watch the movie avatar um they would say i see you and that man just saying that little bit just kind of sends chills up my spine that you would actually see the essence of this person and um you don't go into the relationship hoping that they'll change that you completely see them as a reflection of you and it's just it's a different feeling uh you feel deep empathy towards one another you feel a strong chemistry you work through your problems there's the resentment doesn't build up because your communication stream is really clear that's something that i realized with valerie and i is that you know little tiny things will pop up and we'll talk about it and then it'll be washed away and uh, and you want to do that you want to sit down with each other 
And although we do have our own, our other friends, I would add this to it. If, I don't know if it's in this list, but uh, although we do have other friends that we hang out with separately, we really like hanging out with each other. Like, I really love being alone. But there's one more thing that I love more than being alone. That's being with Valerie. <laughs> She's just, you know, I feel like I can be myself around her. I, could, I feel like um, I'm as comfortable being with her as I am being alone. And uh, that's just a, that's just a wonderful feeling. Uh, you let you, you work through your problems. You let your guard down. And that's something that uh, I know I've told the story before, but when Valor and I first got together, um, my guard was was starting to come up like it normally did in my past relationships. I'm sorry for my past relationships when I had that guard up. We probably both did. Um, but I started to feel my guard come up and it started to say things to me about Valerie. She's too much of this or she's not enough of that and be careful here kind of thing. And I finally let my guard down. It was kind of like letting my guard down enough so that I will, I can love myself through this person. So here's a person that's, that's inviting me to allow love into myself. And my old story started to pick up again. And I finally let my guard down completely. And I have to say, there's another thing that I did before this relationship is I had a conversation with God and I said, you know, I'm, I'll be 60 pretty soon next year. And I said, you know, I've done a lot in this life. I had a really full life, had lots of tragedy and hardship and love and experience and um, trashing myself and building myself back up and all those things. And then I would honestly look back at my life and go, wow, that was amazing. That was a pretty full life. So I could die tomorrow and be really satisfied with the way that life turned out. And I'd have no regrets. So I said, if that's the case that I'm in this place, why don't I just completely let God run the show, let spirit, you know, animate my body in its own way and not try and um, work it towards my Daniel's advantage. And that's when Valerie, you know, came into my, into my life in a, in a uh, love relationship. So, you know, maybe that was it. Maybe that was the thing that I needed to completely surrender to that. Um, let me go over these next couple ones here. Um, they support your growth. This person supports your growth. And I, what I really love about Valerie is that she edifies me so much in the world that she talks about me to other people. And no, I don't need that for my egoic nature, but wow, she just does it. And I do the same thing for her. And I just think she's the most amazing. And I just promote her to other people not to, sometimes I don't tell her about this, but I just, I promote her in a way that, wow, she is so special and so amazing. And I think in the past, although my other relationships, I was with amazing people, but I didn't promote them. I didn't edify them, edify them like I could have. And that's because I was kind of protecting myself and putting myself in a certain position that held something back. And in this relationship, I don't do that. And it's, um, it was the right relationship to cause, to be a catalyst for that. Um, let's see, everything seems to fall in place. That's the thing that I noticed is that, and this is something that we've gotten more um, uh, validation with different psychics and things. It's like, whatever you guys want to do in the world, it will be done kind of thing. And I can't say that I felt the same way in other, in other, other relationships that, that we to the, together could do something. And uh, I know that separately we could, but I didn't get the feeling that we could do it this together. Um, you don't need to speak to connect. Yeah, that's completely true. You respect one another's difference. Yeah, I know that uh, Valerie is more detail oriented and she looks about those details, looks into those details of things, of life and situations. And I'm kind of like Sagittarius guy where I, I don't think about the details so much, but she she invites me to kind of um, walk in more perfection. And it's it's the, the perfection comes from looking at some of those details. So it's like together, I allow her to relax about the details and don't stress about those details. 
but then she invites me to um, balance out myself too. So it's pretty cool. Um, your your values align. Um, I was talking to a couple uh, a couple years ago, and uh, the guy was very much um, uh, pro vaccination, or let's say I wouldn't even say vaccination, pro COVID shot, and uh, she was totally against it. So they had these just completely opposing views, and they had been married for a while. And it was just total out of alignment with this one really critical um, topic. So things like that were um, those really critical topics where it's not, it's not that we agree 100% on everything. It's just that, gosh, most things we have a pretty good mindset about things. Like one of the things that I noticed the other day, we were in ceremony with some dear friends and um, the work that I do um, kind of incorporates some ritual and ceremony and shamanic healing and bringing in the four directions and native ways and nature and that kind of thing. And we're out on the land with this couple who has been, you know, they're like uh, elders to us and really dear friends. And we were doing this ceremony and I was, I think I was drumming or playing the flute and Valerie just went in, she picked up the drum and she started drumming and singing her song, which is, she's not doing it to, um, please me or to uh, like fit in with me. She's her own person, but this is her natural way. This is her, like it comes so naturally to her to break into native song and 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 play the drum. And it was just, I was just looking at it going, wow, this, there's no convincing of her to to do anything. It's, it's just, this is, it's naturally there that this is something that she would do without me. And that's pretty neat. Um, you can communicate honestly. Uh, that was something that we got into when we first got together is that, you know, we had these really, really honest conversations. And when we start in that honesty um, and we keep on becoming honest and we keep on connecting with each other every single day, that honesty just stays there and there's nothing that is left unsaid. And I don't mean just like, challenging stuff that we talk about in a relationship. I mean, the good stuff too, that we're honest with each other about how much I do love you, how much I'm in love with you, how much I adore you, how much I think you're awesome. That's the honesty too, not just the stuff that this thing that you do tweaks me. <laughs> so um, you compromise, you know, it's like um, uh, there's this great balance of um, wanting the best for them that that you're you're to, to see them happy and to see them um taken care of and enjoy is a high priority it's not above your priority of you also having joy and love but you realize that you can have both and so to compromise in a certain way allows you both to have the same joy and the happiness and the fulfillment so it's not about just completely Valerie gets everything and I get nothing. And it's not about me getting everything and Valerie has to suffer. It's actually that there's this slight compromise that happens quite a bit, actually, that we talk about things and where we're going to eat or what we're going to do or what trip we're going to take and that kind of thing. And, and we talk about these things, but we talk about why we want these things, why we're, we, you know, this is a priority for us. And it just, it's very open. You admit when you're wrong. That's that's a big one is that, man, I just before I wouldn't admit that I was wrong. And, you know, it just again, it's about this holding back that I didn't want to put myself in a position of vulnerability or insecurity. That was my thought. But now when I admit that I'm wrong, it just it kind of opens everything up and you actually become more intimate and actually, it just kind of opens a door to getting more of your needs met. So when you're when you're honest like that. So I want to cover. So we've covered about what soulmate connection is, or what it what's perceived to be. The work that I do with people about um, attracting their soulmate has these three elements to it. So one is finding out what their idea of a soulmate is, because if it's something like this knight in shining armor riding in on a white horse and does everything to them and makes love to them every night in the greatest way of the world, you know, it's like, 
kind of need to come back to a uh, reality of what that's supposed to mean that um, is uh, closer to a, a reality. And uh, the next thing that we need to look at is what are the things that are that you might have in resistance to being loved, being taken care of, being nurtured? Um, are you kind of living a life that kind of doesn't really support that consciousness? And then the next part of this, the second step is the guy or the girl that you're looking for is usually up here. It's usually up in a, in a higher consciousness of what you've been expecting. So maybe you've had relationships where the guy or the woman hasn't been really meeting your needs and you're like, man, I really need a soulmate. These are the things that I want and I want us to really connect. And that's awesome. But if you say that I really want a strong communication connection, then you have to ask yourself, do I have a strong communication connection with myself? If you say I want quality of, of life and I want to be really honored and respected, do you ultimately honor and respect yourself? So the question comes out of this, do you, do you love yourself in all ways more than anything or anyone? And if you don't, that's perfectly normal. But if you did, or if you came closer to 100%, then your ability to attract that soulmate that gives you all that loves you in all ways more than anything or anyone, then you'd be more in frequency with that. So what you're looking for is up here, but maybe where you're at, where you've been living your life in your own consciousness and your own frequency and what you believe about yourself. How can you have detrimental or limiting thoughts about yourself and attract someone who has loving thoughts about you? It just doesn't quite match. So there's usually some work to do about in, inside yourself about how you feel about yourself. So sometimes that idea of the soulmate is, I want someone that, that loves me more than myself. You know, that doesn't, that's, that's a, that's a nice thought, but you know, in reality, it's, it's, if you think of it more like a frequency and an energy that like frequencies attract each other. So whatever work that we can do on ourselves to completely be okay, satisfied, loving, committed to ourself, then we start to get into more uh, ability to attract someone. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that the the world, the universe works in mysterious ways and you could do no work and then you attract a soulmate. That is possible. But I'm talking to the people that want to kind of um, uh, manifest something quicker in their life. And that just means that you're going to need to look at your shadows and look at your, your stuff inside of you that, that might be secretly, subconsciously in resistance to having this. So it might be that you say you want a soulmate, you want this um, beautiful relationship, but inside you're not really feeling worthy of that relationship. So um, after we kind of just kind of find out, and it's, it's really becomes like a fun discovery. Wow, isn't that amazing? You had this belief about yourself, or maybe you've got this um, connection, this negative connection with your father. And so you know, the, the type of man that you're attracting reminds you of this, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing where you just discover these hidden little secrets and it's not a completely breaking you down thing. It's just like a, like a light bulb goes off and you go, ah, and there's a little bit of more freedom and empowerment that happens that you go, oh, wow, I had a blind spot. And then you're, you're closer to that. So the last step of it is what is it that you want to feel in this soulmate relationship? So a lot of us, you know, we, we talk about what it looks like, what the details are, but the world, the universe is about feeling. It's about the energy uh, and the, the, the energy of emotions and of feeling. So if you're talking about the details of things and you're describing these things, it's not really as powerful as you saying how you want to feel, because ultimately you just don't. You don't want the Ferrari. You don't want the nice house. You don't want the soulmate relationship. You want the feeling of the, of the Ferrari, of the nice house, of the soulmate relationship, right? You really want how it feels to be in a soulmate relationship. So talk about that. So go into what I want to feel is that I'm, I'm safe. I want to feel that I can trust. I want to feel that um, I have a connection, a deep soulful connection. But you know what my next question is going to be? Do you cause yourself to feel safe? Do you trust yourself and your intuition and your inner knowing? 
Do you have a, a deep soulful connection with yourself? So these are just insights of just kind of really just, it becomes like a, a clear channel into what you're really wanting to manifest in your life. But I'm sure you can see that if you don't feel safe with yourself, if you don't trust yourself or other people, if you don't have a deep you know, soulful connection with yourself, how can you attract that and be able to keep that going with another person? So it's kind of like when I talk about this, it's like, oh man, there's work for me to do. Yes, there's great work for you to do. And like you're in charge, you're the captain of this. It's not just left to, to chance. You're actually going to be able to do things that will bring you closer to something that is more in alignment with how you want to feel. So I hope that helps you. So remember this, the 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 tips on what a soulmate connection means or what it's supposed to mean. Um, look into your life and how you, you know, honestly looking at your your past relationships and what you needed in your childhood that you didn't get. Looking at those little things are just little blossoms that kind of pop up and like everything starts to open up. And then you get into the feeling state of what you want to feel in that soulmate relationship. So Remember, you know, we kind of talk about soulmate relationships in these kind of glowing terms. And, you know, it's great. This person has this, this relationship and they're such soulmates. Well, you have that too, If but there's work that these people do. They work on themselves and they kind of open this up and they, they kind of uh, peel away the layers that are usually in the way of that kind of relationship. Um, I think that's about all I got. I hope this helps. Have a most wonderful day. I know this was kind of crammed into a, a short time where we at. We're at about half an hour here. Um, I hope you have a most wonderful day. I love you. Bless you. And hope to see you next time.